Hey guys, um, I had to come in here and shoot like a follow-up. I just finished my um, my cardio, um, about 300, almost 350 calories. Actually, probably the 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 burn during the workout was more like 325, if you will. But I thought of something in the middle of doing Kathy's. So I did. I actually have to look at my Instagram photos to tell you what it was. Hold on. It was a. Uh, you see that? Kathy's X Train Cardio Leg Blast, um, which I will give you my initial review. Um, this is more of a, like, it's not a strict cardio, like a, just a plyo. This is more like you use heavy weights for lower body moves um, repeatedly, and then she puts cardio in between. So it's more like um, definitely, and you're using your step too, um, legs with weights and then cardio and then back and forth and back and forth. So, you know, I had to modify heavily today because of the shoulder, um, because believe it or not, in a leg workout, a leg cardio workout, still, you know, there's times that you're using your shoulders for certain moves and I just found that it was starting to hurt again and all the smart people around me are telling me to really be careful of my shoulders so that I can heal it quickly. Um, so I'm even gonna text Michael and ask if it's okay for me to do like a leg workout later. Maybe I'll drink it using this hand. Anyway, the reason I'm coming out here and shooting another vlog today is even before I've had my coffee or my breakfast, is to tell you because something came up in as I was doing this video that I have found is a weakness of mine, and I'm I'm sharing this with you guys because I know that as I'm discovering things about myself and getting over it, uh, I know it's going to help you. So one of the things that happened, and this has happened with things like when I first got the Les Mills Combat DVDs, when I first, a year ago, tried Turbo Fire, um, when I've tried other step DVDs or whatever. I am not a coordinated person. I am not somebody who can go into a step class at a gym. I'm not somebody that does those dorky dances they do at weddings like the, I don't even know what they're called, electric slide, chicken dance. Um, because everybody else will get into a groove and they're all moving and, you know, line dancing together and I'm like, wait, whoa, slow down. Do that first move again. I'm a slow analytical thinker. I don't know if I'm describing that correctly, but for example, when I'm out in Vegas on business and a bunch of people want to go play cards, first of all, I'm not into playing cards and gambling, but I'll tell you why. I am just not a thinker like that. And with cards, you have to be able to go, you know, it's very reactive and you throw your cards down and you're immediately reacting and playing. I, I can't, I don't do that. I don't function that way. I have to look at cars and go, okay, so that means that. And then this is the, like, I'm a thinker. Um, so I've always known that that's just not my thing. Um, and I don't want to be in a class and be the only person that's like, you know, and you can't rewind in a class. But here's the thing. I would even do this at home. I would get, you know, a workout DVD and I would start doing something. And if I tried the first time out, this is this perfection complex. If I would try a DVD first time out and it would have a couple moves that I didn't get, I'd be like, forget it. This is not a DVD. For, forget it. I'm not going to do this. I don't have time to learn this because there were two things going on in my head. Number one, I would think it's going to take me too long to keep rewinding this and slowing, slowing it down, so I'm not going to get my workout in today. Like I would think I'm not working hard enough to learn the moves, so it's not a workout. And, and then I would just get frustrated thinking I'm never going to be able to do that. Well, here's the thing. I started doing this workout and there was one move that, and I'm trying to think of what it was, but in this workout there are some people that make workout DVDs and um, they will kind of move you into the move. So they'll, they'll layer it on Beachbody, a lot of their stuff they do this I think pretty well, um, where they will do, you know, they'll, they'll say here's the first move and then you get that and you go faster and faster and faster and then they add a second move and then you do the first move and the second move together and then you do the first move, the second move, the third move together and then you know you keep adding and then you get it and so you keep moving on. Then when you've really gotten that, like for example, when I go back and I'm doing Les Mills Power Kata, that 45 minute workout, when they're showing certain moves and I know what's coming, I just move ahead and I start doing you know, faster side kicks, um, so I'm using up that time. And, and it doesn't really, it's, it's not annoying because the, the teaching time that they're using to show those moves is not too long. And then I can just keep doing the workout. And I like the style, I like the people, I like what I do enough, what, what they do in that video enough that I'm not going, Ugh. you know, you don't feel like you're missing out. There were a lot of things, 
a lot of DVDs where, for example, I will say this, a lot of back in the day, he's getting better, Billy Blanks, when he was putting out DVDs, and I'm like the hugest Tybo fan, but he would put out these DVDs and they would take so much time that literally, even with a DVD, if you wanted to go back and have an advanced workout, you would spend more time fast forwarding it through this, you know, hey, when you stand like this, you gotta put this. It's like, if you're ordering a kickboxing DVD, you know how to do a side kick, you know how to do a front kick, you know how to do a roundhouse, all of that stuff. It was, it was annoying, okay? But that said, there's always a point when you take a DVD out when there's a sequence. You know, you might know how to do a back kick, front kick, side kick, roundhouse kick, you know, whatever. And you might have watched the instructional DVD and you know all the moves, but it doesn't matter. When somebody puts, you know, move number one, move number seven, move number five, and move number four repeated, followed by this jump or whatever, you have to learn it. And what I've done in the past is I would, I would start a DVD and I would not get the move the first time and I would be like, oh, this is going to be too complicated. Forget it. I'm not going to get it. Well, guess what? And they actually talk about this in some of the other, th in some of the, videos I've done, like Turbo Fire, she says it, or, um, you know, with, with Les Mills, one of the women was like, you know, when I started, I was better in, in this style of boxing or kickboxing maybe, but I didn't know these kinds of kicks or whatever, but I, and I didn't think I could do it, but I practiced, and now I can, and now I enjoy it. And Shalene Johnson was saying in one of the Turbo Fires, she's like, you know what, if you screw up this move, and maybe while we're doing this, you know, two, I don't even know what to call them, you know, this sequence of two um, knee ups and then you do four punches and then you dive down or whatever and you're still doing the last one, if you're still moving and you're still acting, you're not, just because you didn't do that move, it doesn't mean that you're not doing the workout, you're still working out. So it's that, it's that whole concept I've talked to you guys about before where, you know, back this up and put it in, in different context of when people say, oh, you're doing step aerobics or oh you're doing insanity you'll never lose weight doing insanity or oh you know like some people that are in CrossFit will just um, scream and, and moan about anybody that does any kind of cardio it's like why don't you just let the people that like to run run and, and runners if, if you don't want to do CrossFit respect what they do because they're doing a great job you know we should all respect each other's choices but you know what if I want to do yoga twice a week and other people think I should be doing it four times a week that's your problem. This is what I do for what works for me. And if it's working for me and I like my results and I'm happy and I'm healthy, then who's anybody else to tell me that I'm doing the wrong thing? So backing it up to, you know, I came out here and actually wrote my sloppy notes to tell you. you. You have to be able to make do with what you have. These are my two points. And and don't give up if you don't catch on. Those are those are two very similar points. I really should stop. Um, but I'm gonna focus. Focus. If, for example, when you're on the road, I was on the road and I, and I was in a hotel gym and I go out and I scout the gym. Now, here's what I packed for my road trip. I pack my valve slides, I pack my valve bands, I pack my resistance bands, I pack my new Lifeline USA gym um, instead of TRX. Um, I pack um, all of my supplements, I pack um, my protein powder, I pack my ProSculpt, all of that stuff. Okay, so I've got my supplements, I've got DVDs for the room, for cardio, I've got, because you never know, you don't know, even if you look up a gym on their website, you don't know if you're going to get there and it's going to suck. Um, so be prepared that you have to do all your workouts in your room or outside, if you will. So then I get to the hotel and I check out the gym. Now the gym where I was staying um, at the Waldorf had a really, really nice selection of free weights. They had a great selection of cardio machines. They had a lot of uh, bikes. They had BOSU. They had spree balls. They had... Um, the bars, they had no barbells, but then they had a couple pre-core machines that were what I would call different interpretations of certain moves like leg press and uh, whatever, so it was, it was different. I, I can't say I really cared for them um, as opposed to what I'm used to using it at my gym, but there was a good selection. Still, that said, there was still a lot of modification I had to do, so when I went down to do leg day, you know, there were none of the really hardcore machines or Smith machines or barbells that I could use um, for walking lunch. All the stuff that I'm used to having, I didn't have. But instead of going, oh, okay, well, I don't have that, I don't have that, I don't have that, I better not, I'm just not going to be able to do legs. That's what I would have done in the past. 
I would have been like, I can't do a really good leg workout here because they don't have this, they don't have this, I'm only going to be able to do this, all they have are dumbbells. And I would have, you know, looked at that and given up. And that's an excuse. That's what, Hawk is out there. Um, that's what we tend to do is find an easy way out. But instead, what I did is I said, okay, I'm going to use what I have to have the kickest, assest, <laughs> that makes no sense, workout that I can. I took my dumbbells, I did high step ups on the, on the, um, whatever it's called, the, the actual bench. So I did high step ups with dumbbells. Um, I did do the leg press machine that they had. I did a buttload of walking lunges with weights. Um, I did, I'm trying to think of what else. Oh, I did sissy squats with the uh, uh, free motion machine, if you will. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, I did all uh, stationary lunges, squats, all that kind of stuff. I did what I could do. Was it the kind of hardcore leg work that I do at my gym? No. Did I have a great calorie burn and get a great sweat vest in? Absolutely. So you have to make do with what you have. Don't go into a gym and go, you know, oh, it's not perfect. Your, your situation doesn't have to be perfect. Do you think people that are in the military that are trying to, you know, they have to stay active and stay healthy while they're overseas, do you think that they have a choice of everything they want? No, but they stay fit. In fact, that's how I think TRX was developed. Um, make do with what you have because there have been people that have been in amazing shape that had nothing. They just used what they had, which is their body weight and outside. Get over it. And if you're in a class and like me, you have a DVD and you don't get it, I didn't get all of Turbo Fire the first time I did it. That's why I tend to do the same workout. Chris is writing to me going, haven't you done the 60 minute one yet? No, I haven't. Because for me, what I want to do is keep doing that first 30 minute one until I really get it. And then I move on and I do the, the next DVD. And then when I feel good about the next DVD, I'll come back and I'll mix these two up. And then I'll, that's what works for me. I don't catch on to some of the moves in class like other people do. And sometimes I will rewind and move it again and rewind and then, and then I figure out something that's gonna help me. There was one move, the move I was just referring to a second ago in Turbo Fire, where you know, you're standing like this and I can't do it because of my shoulder. You lift really high up, this is kickboxing thing, and, and then you pull down twice with your knee, okay? So you do that twice and then you, so if you pull from this side, then you do that twice, and then you punch once, punch twice, you do this four times, and then you kind of dive bomb, and you, you punch really hard with this arm down to the floor. So I think you do a lunge. So you're gonna go up twice, punch, 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 and then down, is that right? Up twice, up twice, punch, 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 down, and you kind of do onesies where you go up, punch, up, punch, okay? For some reason, it took me a long time to figure out, and you know what it was? It was which punch, because when I was first doing it, I was doing, you know, the up, the up, and then I was punching with the wrong hand. So I'd go this hand, this hand, this hand, and then it made me go, oh wait, I'm not punching with the right. And then I get all frustrated because I was having to stop and rewind, but once I figured out that, hey, if you go, if I'm pulling down with this, I'm always going to punch first with the arm towards the side that I'm lifting. So when I do this, one, two, punch, 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 and then it's easier. Where before I was doing one, two, punch, 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 and then I have to go, oh. So once you figure it out, now whenever I go back to that video, I'm doing it and it's, it flows and I can kind of get into it and whatever. But in the past, I would have looked at a video like that and said, forget it, forget it. I, this is too complicated. I'm not gonna be able to get it. It's just not for me. Well, guess what? It is for me because now I'm absolutely loving Turbo Fire. I love, I mean, it's a great workout. It's fun. I'm having fun doing it. I can't believe that I, you know, like wrote this off a year ago. It was more so because of my shoulder, but I, I do think it was also because I thought those moves are too complicated. I'm not going to be able to follow along. Forget it. Guess what? Stop and take the time and get over yourself and get over your ego and take time to learn it because then you're, you know, otherwise you're missing out on so much. And if you travel and, and you don't have a gym and you look at other people and what they're doing and you go, I don't have a DVD player at home. I don't have a, I don't have this. Modify. There are so many great resources out there. There are so many things that you can be doing um, to make stuff happen for yourself. So learn your lessons from me. If you've done some of these same mistakes with having a perfection complex, that everything has to be set up perfectly, everything has to be optimal, get over that. The more you can get over that, I'm just telling you, the more fun you're going to have. Because I know I sure as hell am.